Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kung He. I'm a lead cloud native SE of Custom by Veeam, covering Asia Pacific region. So you might have noticed from the screen. So I am already three times Kubernetes certified. In the last year, I also collected the other seven Kubernetes badges. You yeah, feel free to follow me, to join me, to learn together about the Kubernetes, about the multi-cloud. Today's topic is about how to protect the containers running on Google Kubernetes engine, which is a managed Kubernetes offering from Google Cloud. Uh, let's get started. So to protect the containers, it will be a lot easier if you're using the right tools. In this case, I was using custom by Veeam and uh, I got the automation. I created the automation to make life a lot easier. So if I already have a GKE cluster up running, I actually only need about three minutes to protect the containers running on GKE cluster. If you don't have a GKE cluster up running yet, so you can either build a GKE cluster via the automation. So you can follow the link, uh, which is my GitHub page. Uh, there is an automation script. You literally just run one command in six minutes, the environment is ready. Or you can you know, build a GKE cluster via Google Cloud Web Console. I also have a YouTube video to show you step-by-step step how to build a GKE cluster from a Web Console. Uh, it only takes uh, four minutes. So today I'm going to show you how to build a, build a GKE cluster via the automation. But let's get started. How to build a GKE cluster via the automation. So you open a web browser, you log into Google Cloud Shell, and then you basically clone the repository from my GitHub page. And then you change it to the directory to run the create SA, create the service account first. And after that, you just run gke-deploy.sh. We will build a GKE cluster, okay? So the first few tasks, it's a one-time job. Once you are done, you don't have to git clone again. You don't have to create a SA again. You just run gke-deploy. So let me log into my uh, G Cloud Shield. So I'm actually already logged into G Cloud Shield. Let me reconnect. So once I reconnect to the Cloud Shield, I already get cloned the repository. I already created the service account. All I need to do is just change to the directory. So in this case, I need to change it to the directory. Hold on one second, GKE-K10. All I need to do is just run GKE-deploy. So we will create the GKE cluster, typically less than you know four minutes. So while we're waiting, I might just showing you what we are doing right now. So if I log into my GitHub page here, so you can see I got a multiple automations, not only for Google Cloud, I also have the automation for Azure Cloud, AWS Cloud, IBM Cloud on OpenShift and also Alibaba Cloud and the Tenzu running on AWS Cloud. So let me click into the GKE-K10. So from here, you can see, I'm actually just enhanced the capabilities. So basically with these automation scripts, you can complete, uh, uh, it does support multiple use cases here. Let me jump through to the deploy based on your needs. So obviously you need to have the prerequisite task to complete first before you can uh, deploy. So how to deploy? It depends on your situation. If you don't have a cluster, if you, if you just want to deploy a GKE cluster, that's the first one, deploy a GKE-deploy.sh, it only creates a GKE cluster. That's the one which I just did. But if you already have a GKE cluster, you just need to see how the protection works, how the backup restore works. So you run k10-deploy, we're going to install custom k10, deploy a sample database and plus create a GCS uh, location profile and also create a backup policy, kick off on demand backup jobs. That's the second use case. The last one is uh, 
you don't have anything. You don't have a GK cluster. You don't have a cluster in K10. So we will deploy from the dot slash deploy dot sh. We will deploy GK cluster plus all the K10. Okay, let me come back to the uh, command line. So it is still deploying. Let me pause here. I will come back once the deploy finish. Okay, let's continue. As you can see from the screen, the total time to build a GKE cluster is only three minutes and 19 seconds. So in case you are not aware, you know, I tried all different managed Kubernetes cluster from all different cloud. Google Cloud actually is a fastest. So not only within three minutes, typically less than four minutes, not only create a control plane, you also have the node pool or node group also created. So I'm actually, I need to reconnect to the shell. Okay, I already have a cluster up running. Now, so we already built a GKE cluster wide automation. Basically you just run GKE-deploy. So once you've done the job, if you want to just destroy the GKE cluster, you can run GKE-destroy. Okay, let's continue. So once you already have a GKE cluster up running, as I say, you only need like a three minutes to protect the containers. So, but first of all, you need to connect to the GKE cluster. So you need to retrieve the GKE, you know, cube configure. For my case, since I was running, building the cluster from the G cloud command line, we actually already have a cube configure. Okay, if you don't have the cube configure, or you are going to run from all other terminal, could be from Mac or Windows command line, you need to retrieve the cube configure. So this is a command, G cloud container clusters, and get the credentials followed by your cluster name and also your zone name. Okay, so you can verify the cluster via the command, cube control, cluster info, or get nodes. Let, let me verify the cluster. Make sure the cluster is okay, get a node. You can see I actually, I got a two node cluster here and both of them running 1.21.6. And uh, now I come back to the slide deck here. So how to deploy three minutes to protect the containers. You only need three minutes to deploy a custom K10 plus in, uh, you know, including the PostgreSQL database. Uh, let me kick off the job, K10 dash deploy dot sh press enter. So while we're deploying the job, let me come back to the slide deck just to you know review again what we are deploying right now. So we will install custom K10 first. And we also deploy a PostgreSQL database as a sample database. And we will create a Google Cloud storage location profile. And we will create a backup policy for PostgreSQL database. And then your backup jobs basically will be automatically scheduled to run based on your settings. So for now, I will I schedule the job to run every one hour. Okay, and while we're talking, let me check uh, how it goes. So right now, as you can see from the screen, if I scroll down uh, up a little bit, you can see here is a, Initial command, I run k10 dash deploy. We're going to install custom k10. We're going to install uh, PostgreSQL database. Right now, we're waiting for the load balancer to assign the external IP address for the custom k10 uh, web console. And also we're waiting for the output of the token code. Okay, since it is still running, let me come back to the slide deck. So once the deployment finished, basically three minutes with the, all these tasks will be completed. And then we can move to the next step. We're going to, I will show you how the backup and the restore works. Basically how the container backup and the restore works on GK Kubernetes cluster. So I will simulate a disaster by deleting the original namespace. And then I will show you how to restore from the Google Cloud storage. 
So once you delete the original namespace, your, your snapshot is sitting on the container storage, most likely also deleted. But obviously, it depends on your settings. If you choose to retain, it will be still there. But most of the cases, people choose uh, to uh, delete. So the moment you delete the, your namespace, all of your PVC gone and then your snapshot are also gone. And then I will show you how to restore from Google Cloud Storage and then followed by once you restore to, uh, uh, to the, you know, basically once you restore to the original namespace and we, I will show you how to back up the newly restored uh, applications, okay? So come back to the slide deck. Yep, it is finished. So by end of the scripts you are expecting to see, here is a total time K10 plus PostgreSQL database plus policy it took two minutes and 15 seconds. Here is your token code. Double click the token code before click the link to launch the web console UI. So I click the link. I will launch the custom web console paste the token code, click sign in. In the first time login, it will be asked to your, provide your email address, your company name, click submit. And now I logged in. I can see I got a two applications here and my back of a job already kicked off. So while we're talking here, the job already kicked off. And if I click the job details here, you can see my first task, subtask, Basically, we're doing the snapshot of your application components. We're doing the snapshot of your application configurations, your Kubernetes configurations, and also the workload of PostgreSQL. If I click the job details here, on the right-hand side, you can see all of your spec artifacts are discovered by custom via the API. So you've got the snapshot, you've got your persistent volumes, you got your namespace, the secrets, uh, config maps, uh, you know, everything supporting your application are discovered here. So being able to discover, being able to have the visibility into your Kubernetes cluster, there are a lot of advantages. So when somebody accidentally deleted the secrets or maybe deleted the config maps or maybe delete a uh, service account, a role binding, et cetera, your service is not, you know, not up running to not providing the correct service to your end users. So we allow it to granularly recover the individual resource if something happened. Okay, so let me come back to this uh, dashboard. If I click at applications, you can see not only I have my default namespace, I also have my K10 dash PostgreSQL, that's my, uh, sample database, which I deployed earlier. If I go back to the dashboard and I select the settings, you can see this is my Google Cloud storage location. And I got my bucket name here. I was using US Central One region. So this is my location profile. Why I need a Google Cloud storage? So the main reason is uh, when we take the snapshot, the persistent volume snapshot and your Kubernetes configurations, your application components, all still sitting within the cluster. So if something happened, if all of your cluster is gone, you can't recover. So by creating a storage bucket or object storage location profile here, we allow you to copy the snapshot from the container story to the object story, which is can be far away from your data center. Okay, if I want to create a new profile, you can choose create a new profile. You can choose any one of the cloud object storage or any S3 compatible storage. We also support NFS uh, five star or being backup repository as a target. Okay, let me come back to the dashboard. Now all the jobs are already finished. So as I say, now I will go ahead to simulate a disaster by deleting the original namespace, I do the delete uh, namespace, my K10 PostgreSQL. I will force the, the delete, I will run the delete immediately, okay? So I deleted my original namespace shortly, the original namespace will be gone and uh, 
basically including all of your snapshot also gone. Now, how to recover? I will show you shortly how to recover. So basically from on my dashboard under the applications, you can click uh, uh, the applications here. Uh, since it's already, so once it's already deleted, you actually you don't see the uh, K10 dash PostgreSQL here. So right now you can select the click the restore once the delete is already finished. So let me come back to command, uh, command line to say it was deleted. Once it's deleted, it's gone. So where it is? So you can click a field, field by status uh, under removed. You can find the application which we already have a backup. So if I do a refresh here, it should be uh, here showing here shortly, okay? So on the remove, let me do a refresh. So it is showing here, it's under remove the section here. So I got a two restore points, click restore. Why two restore points? The first restore point is sitting in the container storage. Since I already removed the original namespace and the persistent volumes, so your snapshot are also gone. So how to restore? I can restore from the second restore point, which is the exported section. So I click uh, exported the recover point and I don't need to do anything. I just, you, you can select to restore to the original namespace or you want to restore to a new namespace. I want to, let's say, I want to restore to k 10 postgresql new. So I don't want to use my original namespace and I want to restore to a new namespace. I can click create a new namespace and then you just click restore. If you don't want to do any advanced settings, you just click restore, we will restore everything to the new namespace. Before I click the restore, just to highlight, we have the advanced capabilities here. Since we have the visibility into your Kubernetes individual resource uh, spec artifacts, we allow to deselect all spec artifacts here. If some of the delete config maps or delete secrets, you just take the resource and do the restore. So for now, let me reselect everything, click the restore, or confirm the restore, and you can track the restore from the dashboard, or you can monitor from the command. Let's say I want to monitor the port of my new namespace dash new. I can watch the status of the restore. Okay, while we are talking here, the container is creating. So the affinity port, that's our restoring uh, port, temporary restoring port. And once it's running, and we will swap to your actual uh, PostgreSQL production containers. Okay, and while we are talking here, the PostgreSQL container is creating. So basically just within a few seconds, the restore job will be finished. Okay, so if I want to monitor from the dashboard, so you can monitor the status from the dashboard as well. So here, if you click the details, you can see once the details showing here, you will see the details. So go back to the command line. We can monitor the status here. So shortly, so the temporary port already terminating and the restore data port also terminating in a shot that the PostgreSQL will be up running. So typically within, you know, like, a, you know, seconds or minutes label and the, the containers will be up running. Okay, the restore job is still uh, in progress. So let me come back here and just wait. Okay, so 67 seconds. The PostgreSQL containers is already running. Now we are doing the readiness check. So shortly, it will be coming a ready status as well. 81 seconds, the containers is up running. Okay, so that's the way basically, this is the highlights from the dashboard. You can also see the restore job of finish. In the moment of restore finish, you can see we discovered the new application. If I click applications here, you can see my new application. It's called k 10 postgresql new Okay. And uh, 
yeah, that basically highlights how the restore job works, but we haven't talked about the backup jobs. So I already demonstrated to you how to restore in a disaster situation. My container gone, my container storage also gone. I restored from a Google Cloud storage in the container is up running, but now the newly restored containers, I don't have a backup policy yet. So how to create a backup policy? It is super simple. You just click a create a policy and a give a policy name, set your backup frequency, could be hourly, daily, monthly, yearly, could be on demand. You can make it every five minutes if you choose to. It's under advanced options. For now, I leave it as it is. And the retention settings, you can customize based on your requirements. And after that, we normally highly recommend enable backup via snapshot exports. So I mentioned earlier, if you just do the snapshots, your production storage, your container uh, snapshot storage, all sitting in the same container storage. If the storage is gone, the data center is gone, you can't recover. So once we enable backup via snapshot exports, you always have a copy outside of your container storage or from the object storage. So there are some other, other advanced settings. You don't have to, you know, unless you are interested. For now, I just leave it as it is. Select the application. For now, I select the individual namespace, but you can do the label-based selection as well. For now, I select the all resources, but you can filter the resources. So maybe some resources you don't want to back up, or maybe you just want to back up any particular resource. You can have the include option and also exclude option. Okay, I got everything ready. I can go ahead and create, create a policy. Before I create the policy, show you how to generate the YAML file. If you don't want to click here, click there, all these settings, you just want to automate it. That's how my initial automation, I created the policy using the YAML file. You can copy the YAML file uh, to, you know, put to the file, YAML file, and then you run the cube control, apply the YAML file, we will create the policy. So now let me just create the policy. The job will be automatically scheduled to run every hour. If you don't want to wait, click run once, we will automatically kick off the job immediately. Go to the dashboard, you can monitor the job status. That basically highlights how to back up the newly restored database. Okay, and uh, the job will be, you know, kicked off the shortly. It's already up running. Let me come back to the slide deck. Yeah, that basically covers the, everything I listed here, how to back up uh, and restore the containers. In this case, I was using PostgreSQL as a uh, test database. So once you've done all of these, if you want to clean up, you just want to clean up uh, the custom K10, clean up the PostgreSQL, you can run custom, uh, you can run k10-destroy.sh. We will remove PostgreSQL database. We will remove custom K10. We will remove the Google Cloud storage bucket. Okay. So I'm not going to run the K10 destroy right now because uh, the backup job is uh, happening right now. I will show you shortly once the job is finished. There is a few reference links I want to highlight here. My reference, uh, my automation source code, the bash shell scripts basis automation, all from a GitHub page. You can go to this link. I will include the link in the, uh, you know, in the comments, so you can easily to click the link. You know how to build a GKE cluster from a web console. I will also include the link uh, from the common page. And uh, there is a free Kubernetes training, also very useful. You might be interested in a documentation from a custom website. And if you're interested to try my automation tool right now, I'll go to GKE six minutes, one command to build. And I got the AKS uh, for Azure Cloud in eight minutes, one command to build. And I also have uh, AWS Cloud Automation, 20 minutes, one command. And uh, IBM Cloud, build the OpenShift Container Platform plus the OpenShift Data Foundation or OpenShift Container Storage, et cetera, 45 minutes. Additional information, if you are interested, I will 
include the link in the comments of the YouTube channel as well. So how to build the popular Kubernetes cluster, OpenShift, Rosa, Tenzu, uh, Alibaba Cloud, ACK, HT, Ismail container platform, how to back up the containers, how to build and protect the vital automation, how to, you know, one of the popular Kubernetes cluster, how to build, protect and migrate the containers. Uh, that's pretty much all I want to cover for today. Coming next, I'd like to show you how to migrate the containers to Google Kubernetes Engine cluster. Could be from our on-premise, could be from our other cloud, could be from our other Kubernetes distributions. That's all for today. Very much appreciated your time. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, any comments, feel free to drop me an email, feel free to follow me, join me to learn Kubernetes, learn multi-cloud together. Thank you very much. Have a good one.